Thank you, everyone. Um, good afternoon, everyone. So today we'll be looking at um, blockchain for fintech. Uh, blockchain for fintech revolution, a case study of Inera. So um, because of time, because um, they have to give us a very uh, short time. And when I was coming here, someone asked me, what are, you, what are you guys going to talk about? I said, in error. So from the sector I'm coming from, um, someone asked me to ask, when airdrop? So in error, when airdrop? So I think some crypto people here understand what that means. OK. So first, um, I will start with you, sir. How is blockchain technology powering the fintech revolution in Nigeria? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think I'll be starting this discussion by appreciating the work that has been done by the um, DG of NIDA. Not only that, also the collaboration that has exist and currently Work is still ongoing on that between NCC, CBN, and being championed by the Minister of Communication and Digital Technology, Digital Economy. Um, to start with, we need to understand what is in era. And why do we need in era? For me, I've um, been playing in the financial inclusion space for the past 12 years, spent some time with a bank, Tier 1 Bank. Uh, move to telecom industry, driving financial inclusion. And if you have, if you have observed the trend, you will have seen that in the past maybe 40 years, CBN reported of recent that we have 65%, 64% financially included people in Nigeria. And they have a plan of achieving 95% by 2024. That tells us that there's a potential that needs to be tapped. However, one of the strategy is that CBN launched Inera. What is Inera once again? Inera is our cash that is in electronic form, being powered by blockchain technology. And if you look at it critically, I want to explain uh, what are the use cases, what can we leverage? Most importantly, the fintech that are here today. How can we leverage the Inera to scale? How can we leverage the Inera to build products and offerings? Because what is very important is that fintech revolution is key. With the Hinera, what can we do with it? What can fintech do? If we have monitored the trend also, we'll have seen that if you have a services today, for you to make payment is a challenge. If you want to collect payments, is that you use card? And if you want to use card payments, we know what happens today, 1.5% transaction charge and all of that. But with the Hinera, it's a wallet service. Is a wallet service is your cash in um, electronic format. You can use that to make payments. One of the strategies that CBN is champion that they have pushed forward is that they are going to open the APIs for fintech. What that means is that if the API is open for fintech, from the comfort of my mobile phone, so customer can register for Inera. From the comfort of the mobile phone, customer can pay for services, and thereby I can drive financial inclusion. As I drive financial inclusion. I see opportunity because working with fintech, when I done the days in the, te in the telecom industry, why I was championing financial inclusion in the telecom industry, we observe that people come to you with solutions. However, payment is a challenge. If you look at mobile tax, mobile tax today can be delivered, micro payment, mobile tax can be delivered on USSD. However, payment is a challenge because whose wallet do you want to use? We have different players in the mobile money space today. However, with the e-Naira, once CBN opens up the platform, giving uh, FinTech um, the APIs is a potential for the FinTech to launch services and drive payments using the e-Naira mobile wallet solution. That said, also is that PB, uh, PwC conducted a research of recent and it says trends from abroad. What does that mean? They were looking at remittances that is coming in into the country. And they projected that by 2023, Nigeria is going to be seeing inflow of $34.8 million. 
What does that mean to us? What it's also mean to FinTech is that with the inera solution, we can, FinTech can leverage on strategic partnership with, the, um, with TPP, with the card scheme, the likes of Visa, the likes of MasterCard. We can work together, CBN can work together and championed by the DG of NIDA and some other stakeholders to provide wallet and services for the FinTech and they can leverage this strategic partnership to work on Visa Send, which can be used for remittances inflow to the country. They can also work with MasterCard and use MasterCard Play for remittances. Yeah, Last I think, is that uh, because I'm of time, because yes. of time, please. Um, because of time, yeah. because you just answered like three or four questions, wow. you know, at the same time. You know, you know, um, okay, like apologies. you have a whole lot of content, sir. Right. So um, I think I need to ask Bello this: Is Inera on blockchain? It is uh, powered by a blockchain, and uh, Inera uh, is using the technology of a blockchain. Therefore, Inera is um, Nera 3.0. Okay, so, um, sir, we are trying to rush this section. You have limited time, please. So, um, what is different between the Nera you have in your account and the Inera? Yes, sir. All right. There is no much difference. It contains the same value. It's still a legal tender in Nigeria. One is physical in a legacy system in the banks, and the other is leveraging a digital technology, which is the blockchain technology, to transfer that physical asset into a digital asset. Uh, to put that in perspective, you have your picture at home on the wall. You take your camera, you take a picture of it. You've converted that physical asset to a digital asset. That remains on your phone and can be distributed easily. That's how Inara is. Okay, but still the same thing still happen when you send the normal Naira to people. You still send the Inara to people. So what I, I'm still yet to understand, because people ask this a lot, right? What are the difference between that particular one they said e Naira and the one we already have before? You know, because it's still, I can still send it to you, the same value, the same number. So why is Inera different? Well, the first thing I would say is Inera is different because you have access to it immediately, faster. Um, it can be used anywhere at any time. Um, you don't need to have a physical presence at a, a brick and mortar vicinity to have access to your phones. And you don't need to store physically or exchange physically. The all that you can do would be remote at any given time. So again, just to re-emphasize, it's the same amount of money. One is physical and one is digital. The same value, it's legally acceptable in Nigeria. But what technology brings is speed, accountability, transparency, and the ease of doing transaction using Inara. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Franklin. A research came up um, two days ago saying the adoption from Bloomberg, saying the adoption of Inera is 0.5%. So do you think the awareness of Inera, do you think the CBN is doing enough to create more awareness on Inera? If yes, how? All right, thank you so much for that question. Um, I actually went through the, the research and I wasn't so surprised because um, I actually expected that. Um, initially, when the Inara was launched, uh, what I thought was that um, the government is just about to open a gateway for those of us who are building in this space to uh, collaborate with banks and, of course, CBN to provide solutions. Because the teeny number of youth that are into blockchain is, you can't imagine the number of people who are getting into the space on a daily basis, right? And um, if, uh, the CBN played their game well by finding a way to collaborate with the informal sector who are doing a lot of things in the space. The adoption would have been like wildfire, right? But the, the, the direction they took in just working with banks simply made Inera another digital Naira. Like there is no difference between what um, the fiat Naira that is already in existence is offering from what they have just brought out to do with Inera. 
So what you see is that people don't people get confused in the mix. Um, if they can still make transactions with their GT Bank account app, access app, um, Zenit Bank app, why should they now use uh, e naira to perform the same transaction? Because it's the same wallet. Their money is domiciled in the same apps. They can simply say, why should I now switch from my normal naira to e naira because I want to perform transactions? So there is little or no incentives for people to switch to e naira. There is no uh, proper awareness to people who already understand cryptocurrency and blockchain as um, what it has always been, right? So if they want to drive the adoption they need, my own suggestion um, may be for them to find a way to collaborate with the informal sector that are already doing stuff in the space using the already understood um, um, system, which is the normal cryptocurrency. Find a way to inter interoperate with them and, and push the adoption through them. It's because the banks have not been playing their own part. And CBN has taken it upon themselves that they will be the one to promote the e -Nera. But that is not how I think it should work. Because if truly, you know, e is not, uh, is non interest. While the normal NERA they have in the bank account is interest. It has taken the CBN much longer time for them to go and do the awareness themselves. So CBN has now become a bank. No, if CBN should now instruct the commercial banks to automatically switch to the e -Nera, that will have been, in fact, all of us will have been using the e -Nera by now. They are chasing the people that are financially excluded who do not have the mobile phones to carry out the exact blockchain peer-to-peer -peer transaction and they are opening account for them and the process is so tedious for them to create that account. If that adoption is wanted, Commercial banks should be instructed automatically to switch to e -Nera because the payment will be simple. Uh, everything is going to be as easy as possible. In fact, by now, all Nigerians will have, been, have an e -Nera account. But for now, me, as all myself, I have more than 10 banks' account in my own account. It, it, it doesn't make sense. But when CBN introduced the speed wallet for the e -Nera, every Nigerian should have had that on his mobile phone and using the USSD. That, US, that speed wallet can easily access my account in the Access Bank or any other bank and bring out money for me to spend easily. But the process of signing up to even have the Enera account is not an easy task. And that is why the adoption, they are just making noise. How can it be introduced for the last one year and only 8 billion transactions have taken place on the platform? While Nigerians are hungry for that account to be created for them, we needed that easier solution. How is it going to be possible for me to go to the bank, wait for somebody who is wearing a wig, telling me to go and come back tomorrow while I carry out a transaction? The technology is there. <laughs> Nigeria has the fastest, what do you call it, advanced payment system in the world. But the people are not enjoying the services. And those who are in the uh, position to let people adopt it are not. In fact, the banks are not ready to use the Enera. I'm advising this EBN if they truly want that adoption of the Enera, should instruct the bank or revoke their license. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I want to add to that. No, Sorry. You okay. just you just say something. Okay. Please. Let's okay. let's okay. 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 Um, a we bit. have less than one minute. Please. A few seconds, please. I know. So one of the things I do in fintech is to help fintech businesses grow. Um, to help adoption, I would recommend three things. The first is government has certain things that they do financially with every individual. The, the bills, the intervention, the end power, all those things are disbursement opportunities to use in, uh, in IRA. Why are we not doing it? Why are we looking for bank accounts if they truly want adoption? The second is bills and bonds and other transactions that the government does. Even the levies you pay at local government level, why can they not be in IRA if we truly want adoption? We always want to look out for other institutions to promote things. Well, we also have powers within ourselves to implement things that can work. Okay. Yeah, frankly. Okay. All right. So the, the primary function of the Central Bank of Nigeria, of every central bank, is to issue and to regulate currencies, right? And not to carry out uh, direct banking services. Because if they do, they are taking the food off the table of the, the uh, Apex banks. So I don't actually expect the CBN to go all out to do this job because if they do, they are spoiling business for the other people. So um, I, I, I agree with him. Um, just like I said before, 
the best way to do this is to partner with the other informal sectors who are already carrying out transactions outside the formal uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, space. So if they're able to do that, like bill payments, monitor transactions um, for several other uh, uh, sectors, they, they adopt Okay, yeah, final words, please. Final words. Okay, okay, on my side, I agree with um, other stakeholders. However, it's an opportunity for us as fintech players. We can develop solutions that will address the artisans at the unbanked pain points. If we develop solutions that is addressing their pain points, it's going to be a use cases for them to use in era. You know, banks have been playing these spaces for the past 25 years, 30 years, and CBN has been experiencing challenges with financial inclusion. What I think we can do as fintech, if you have games, you have a store, you know, you have mobile payments that you want to do, we can approach. CBN should release API for people to integrate to the Ethnera and drive payments. So, in summary, is that if fintech can address pay point by coming up with solutions to address customer pain points, we can use Ethnera, a mobile wallet, as a means of payment. And in that case, we can drive financial inclusion. They have CBN has issued uh, licenses to banks. They've issued licenses to mobile network operators but they have not recorded significant mileage, but it's an opportunity for us as FinTech. Let's, let us come up with solution that will leverage the mobile wallet as a means of payment, and we can drive financial inclusion. Lastly is that today you can open um, the e-wallet, uh, the, uh, the uh, in-era with your inner hand, which provides an opportunity for your bank to seamlessly open it. Also is that uh, NCC has enabled um, CBN by issuing out code, star 997. If you dial that code now, seamlessly, you can onboard on in air. I think the right. regulators have done their own part, and from there we can drive financial thank inclusion. You. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. And there is also one thing you talk about, the airdrop. The airdrop, if anything has to do with crypto and uh, uh, blockchain, there is an airdrop. So I'm trying to tell you now, Nigeria also, the in air, they have airdrop. Yeah, they, uh, the moment I think, you sign out, I think they do. Yeah. I think they do. I think every transaction you you make no, from by outside, of, outside Nigeria, by of also you, you have, have $5. 15 era. You have 15 era free when you sign up with the e-wallet. Okay, when you sign up with e-wallet, you have 15 that, That's what they call the airdrop. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Yeah, thank thank you, you very much. Thank please you. Please, a round of applause for our panelists. Please put your hands together for them. They've done a wonderful job.